so um, I um, want to uh, to say everybody that uh, you we need to to keep the microphone off when you are not talking. Uh, we have three presentations today. Jose, Paola, and Philippe. The, the topic of the webinar is which fair and sustainable tourism practice. And each of the speaker will present their own actions and some good practice on this subject. And every present presentation will dure uh, around uh, uh, 15 minutes. And then we have we will take a, a time to of question and, re and response. And at the end of the session, we will have talk uh, with everybody on the three uh, the three topics and the three presentation. I propose that uh, we begin by uh, the presentation of uh, Jose, and um, I want to introduce him. Uh, in, in a few words, Jose has an education in uh, tourism and human sciences. He's a uh, postgraduate in international cooperation of, for development. He is the founder and the managing partner of Quan Consulting, based in Madrid, in Spain, but also uh, is the founder of Earth, uh, which is well known in uh, the East uh, uh, Network. Is a member of the board of ISTO International. Uh, is represent, re representative for Spain of green destination and uh, the regional coordination for Europe of good travel program. He is also a founder and vice president, president of CETR, the Spanish Center for Responsible Tourism, and is involved in many environmental and touristic projects. Uh, please, Jose, go, go on. I give you the floor. Hello, good morning to all of you. Thank you very much uh, to ISTO uh, for organizing this and letting uh, me the, the opportunity to present some of our ideas and uh, and uh, some of our findings on uh, related to responsible tourism, because I think, as you have seen, I am involved in responsible tourism everywhere, certifications, projects, training, networks like ISTO and uh, many others. And so this is really my, my life. And then I will share the screen. I will, I will just escape the, the slides of the presentation of, the, of myself and the company, because it's uh, already Benoit did it, so this is more than, more than perfect. I will just a moment, I will share the screen. I think you are, uh, you are already, you are already seeing the screen. And uh, again, just to, to, to complement a bit the, presentation what we do very very briefly because this is not the idea of selling our company today we worked in 2000 you know, when we started uh, we support the destinations all over the world already more than 50 countries 51 uh, in product development planning training uh, coaching and marketing of sustainable tourism we have three main lines which is international cooperation uh, European projects and some local and regional ones, and then uh, in the international cooperation, which is the, the only thing which is a bit stacked at the moment, is the we work with the main uh, national multilateral donors, like, uh, Inter American Development Bank, the CBI from Holland, etc. And we are also quite involved in the social economy. We are also founders of SANAS, is the Spanish network of. Uh, triple bot online companies, which is, uh, we call uh, this fourth sector. So we are involved uh, at the same time, we are training to find the links between sustainable tourism and the social and solidarity economy, we have relationships with RIPES, the European Network for Social and Solidarity Economy, even developing some joint projects with other Italy together with other uh, 
uh, European partners. So that's that's all from this side. And then let's go to the to the question. So the I think as we uh, plan to do this uh, before making some proposals, some proposals and presenting some good practices to to show what's going on. I think that they are going on very um, problematic things in the in the field of tourism in general and you know, sustainable tourism in particular. One of the things which is more worrying to me is that uh, uh, apparently during the pandemics there was a reflection on how the, the tourism industry could be more more sustainable. Uh, there has been carried out lots of studies talking about the new the new tourist post uh, the COVID is more is more sustainable, is more responsible. But at the end, uh, once we are looking at the recovery, I have been traveling in the past months in France, in Spain, in uh, Portugal, uh, Greece, Italy, so all the Mediterranean with different, different projects. And what I see is not uh, this at all. So I see how the massive tourism, how the over tourism and how the the models based in the low cost, they are coming back powerfully. Now our our beaches and our islands are already collapsed and still we are not in the sea in the season. So there is uh, even some islands uh, uh, that uh, pretend to be sustainable destination leaders. Then the, the companies do not find the staff because the staff cannot live in there. So the space is uh, all given to the tourists, the land is all given for the tourist development, and then even the companies is, uh, is something quite pretty stupid. So it uh, it puts uh, sustainability out of the question when you cannot have staff for the hotels or you cannot have doctors because there is not a place where they can live at affordable prices. So which is absolutely uh, absurd from the point of view of planning. And then we are we are facing again this. Uh, over capacity and over tourism problems. We are uh, st uh, we just started the, the recovery post COVID and we see the first signs of tourismophobia in some places. So this is something a bit crazy. It looks like we didn't learn the lessons from the from the pandemic from the pandemic and from from the now year 2019, where many destinations in the Mediterranean were completely collapsed. Then we also are looking how the with the this new trend brought by the COVID to look for the rural areas because there is fresh air, there is healthy space, they are not crowded, etc. So many rural areas, at least in my country, they are becoming uh, like theme parks. There is a there is also uh, raising some tourismophobia in this kind of area. So we are not really facing the structural problems like the loss of population, the loss of the healthy soil, the loss of spices, but we are building some kind of theme parks for the inhabitants of the big cities that really need space after the, the, the different lockdowns. So I think we are really not taking any lessons learned from the, from the previous years. Then also the, the destinations is a kind of uh, of a wave of uh, greenwashing, like uh, many destinations pretend to be sustainable, they get certified and they they do all these kind of declarations and charters. But uh, every day I read the, all the tourism international press and the same destinations and opening a new airline connection every day. And I am talking about uh, uh, long haul destination, long haul. Uh, outgoing markets, uh, they are looking uh, still kind of desperately and cannibalizing one to each other, looking for looking for tourists from long haul destinations. So I find a complete contradiction on how can we pretend to to are a low carbon, to promote a low carbon travel or, or a sustainable model when we are promoting and uh, new airline connections almost every, every day. I, I find notices of that. Uh, every single day. Still, the competition is based on price. We are going back to the old model. So uh, some destinations in Caribbean, for example, they go back to compete on the very, very low prices. So 
making very making really difficult to bet on local services on the slow qualified tourism models which mean at least in most of the mediterranean countries uh, the prices of the local food or the prices of the local services of the local qualified guys are much more expensive than the low cost models meaning free tours and the, these kind of things and then we we really are facing a a, a, a big uh, contradiction and also in the other side uh, destina destinations uh, especially to the victor operators keep on promoting long haul uh, and exotic destinations will while at the same time they are sending messages to the tourists and to the society all the time about uh, the, the catastrophe of the climate change the the uh, the carbon emissions, etc. Then we send this message in the in the morning, and in the afternoon we are again promoting travel to Costa Rica for seven days. So this is quite, uh, uh, I think, it's even stupid this this uh, this uh, situation we are facing because it's like we are going back to the old model. And then what can we do? Uh, and especially what we are doing, we are trying to do as much as we can do since we are just a as a uh, consultancy company but belonging to many many networks uh, as it was presented related to to sustainable tourism we are uh, uh, trying to imagine design and promote uh, new ways of long carbon travel for example we just started a project where the SPA, italian association of responsible tourism is also involved and this led by the the french uh, atr the association of responsible uh, tour operators we have also some greek uh, greek uh, partner partners specialized in the in the environmental impacts and the, the the work that we have to perform in the next years is to to develop uh, trainings and uh, tools applications games uh, some gam some gamification to uh, to promote the low carbon travel in the different uh, tour operators and clients in the different countries involved. So this is something that we are proposing as a good practice, uh, but we are just starting. But then not starting, but doing already, we are also collaborating to promote uh, what we call the Rutas por el Clima in Spanish, the Roots for the Climate. So it's an ensemble of initiatives in different Spanish cities that uh, promote uh, visiting the city using exclusively public transport uh, or uh, low carbon electric transport uh, bicycle uh, visits on food this is very well accepted at the moment in sevilla barcelona madrid malaga that i think is in five cities at the moment so it's a kind of active uh, promotion of a new model of, uh, of travel in the urban in the urban areas uh, we are developing also some uh, this is from the side of green destinations uh, where i work for many years uh, representing spain uh, we were a bit uh, worried for many many years i have been personally pushing a lot uh, that we needed some system not very expensive very simple very easy to handle for the small municipalities and for the small companies and we finally developed it it's called the good travel program it's possible to find all the information in the in the websites about that but then the idea and it's something that was launched some months ago is really to make the sustainability systems uh, reachable for the small realities all over the world i am taking care only of europe but the, we have uh, regional coordinators everywhere and this is the idea and just to finish with the proposals i think that uh, one of the things we have to do and we are also actively doing with the, i normally work for destinations but with this kind of explosion of sustainable tourism after the pandemics more and more companies tour operators hotel companies are approaching us to to develop sustainability policies we are trying to go a bit beyond of the the callos and the mechums of responsible tourists which are uh, extremely useful but uh, we need a bit more and then we are developing together with the tour operators and the companies the creation of communities of uh, tourists so active communities where we uh, have more engagement where we uh, 
link the sustainability with the loyalty program. So the more sustainable you are, the more points you can get. Even we are considering now some uh, technological tools like the non-fungible tokens, etc., that are already starting to be used as loyalty programs to connect that with sustainability. So this will be some very hot topic in the next uh, two years, and we are working quite actively in that. So trying to join the knowledge from the sustainability and the knowledge from the technology side. It means also generate spaces of interaction between tourists and local community, because uh, as I just told, I, I fear what I see is that we are going back to the to the ghetto model. So in many, many rural areas, for example, there's a lot of problems, loss of population, biodiversity, but there are wonderful resort, resorts completely isolated from the local reality where everything is very sustainable, everything is uh, apparently perfect, it's a kind of sustainability paradise, but totally disconnected of the social and environmental reality around. This is model that you know is happening in many, many developing countries, uh, but this is also going to, to, uh, to be spread in the in the rural areas and they think this is quite dangerous to 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 open this uh, to open this box uh, because it's a model of tourism that at the end is not uh, is not bringing real development to the territories and finally i think that within all this we need to enhance a lot uh, to the role of heritage interpretation the role of soft skills in general in the last years we have been uh, working a lot uh, skilling the people technologies uh, digital marketing etc i i lack a lot when i travel to the to the countries and the communities i like a lot of the soft skills we need the good local heritage interpreters good storytellers we need uh, power what they call now the powerful skills uh, more sustainability leadership in the, in the local population and uh, and to, to, to train, the, the, especially the locals, in some of these new um, active engagement techniques, because if we finally, if we build the, the community of tourists, which we are doing already, I think quite well with operators and hotel chains, but we are unable to connect them to the people, uh, to the local population, at the end, this will be, from my point of view, a very strange sustainability model so I think uh, there is a lot of things to do. There is a lot of things to do together. This is why this is why I am involved with uh, OITS because I also think that the social issues are still uh, a bit hidden behind the environmental issues. It does not mean they are completely forgotten, but I think that uh, we are uh, probably most of the events and the and the and the research groups we are still too much concentrated on the environmental issues i don't take uh, i don't i don't really um, discuss the importance of uh, these environmental issues but i think that we have to pay much more attention to the social models and to the social impacts if we really want to be want to be sustainable uh, and uh, and generate a stable and long term sustainable destination so this is more or less my first uh, my first ideas not to take in not to take much more time and then we have plenty of time after my colleagues for any question comment or discussion so thank you very much for for your attention and then the material will be uh, handy to everybody here you have all the all the contacts and the, and the information thank you very much Thank you for uh, this first presentation. Um, it provokes a lot of questions. Um, and uh, especially, uh, I think, when I hear you, that sustainability requires, requires to rethink the tourism, to, especially with the, to think local tourism, slow tourism, but also it, it needs to, to change the practice uh, and the habits of the of the tourists themselves. Um, maybe we can take one or two questions before uh, 
switch to to Paola, but uh, we are uh, we we are open to question if if there is any question at this moment of the exchange, or we, we can also uh, switch to to Paola and take uh, a few more time to. Uh, uh, the exchange at the end of the presentation, because I think that uh, the three the three presentation will uh, will ten, each each uh, each one will will uh, respond to to the other. Um, so, Paola Paola Fagioli is involved in the tourism sector of Lega Ambiente since uh, two thousand and five. Uh, Lega Ambiente is a famous Italian environment and the environmentalist association formed in the 80s. And Paola collaborates in various initiatives, including the ecological label for accommodation and tourism services. She also participated to training activities uh, with national and international uh, association. And she worked on projects for the development of sustainable destination. In the last year, she has represented Lega Ambiente as project leader in the implementation of practices in the bathing sector. And she also represents the association within AITR, the Associazione Italiana, Italiana Turismo Responsabili, as vice president. Um, Paula, you can take the, the talk now. Thank you, Benoit, and thank you to ISCO for this uh, invitation. I'm very pleased to be here. And now I share a presentation of my association and also um, of some good practices that I collect uh, for you today. So. So I hope you can see full screen. Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> now I'll start. As Benoit said, Lega Ambiente is one of the most uh, popular environmental association in Italy. Uh, we had one principal office in uh, Rome, but also uh, 18 regional offices and uh, about 1,000 uh, local groups uh, and uh, 1,015 members uh, and supporters all over Italy. Uh, we have founded our mission on scientific amb ambientalism, collecting from below thousands of data on our ecosystem and these data are the basis of um, every complaint, uh, dossier, and proposal that we made uh, to um, Italian institutions. Um, we are a no profit association, a non partisan, but we made a strong lobby work. And thanks to our lobbying work in 2015, environmental crimes entered in the Italian Penal Code. Uh, that is a very uh, a big success for us. Uh, so we are <laughs> very happy to have done all these works. Um, and uh, uh, some of uh, um, some terms that are now part of the Italian vocabulary um, were coined by the Lega Ambiente, such as Eco Mafia, that is uh, a um, uh, organized criminal. Uh, criminal organization special, specialized in uh, environmental crimes uh, or uh, eco monster uh, that are uh, buildings uh, uh, that has uh, um, uh, a very negative impact uh, on uh, environment uh, or landscape. In uh, um, 1997, uh, we created uh, our own uh, eco label for accommodation uh, facilities. This uh, eco label born from the bottom uh, with the collaboration of entrepreneurs in the definition of the standards. And uh, uh, this is why it's uh, still the most common uh, eco label in our country, which about uh, uh, 300 certified accommodations. 
um, this label contains uh, uh, standards uh, that are related uh, um, to all the fundamental uh, uh, elements uh, of environmental respect, uh, such as uh, separate waste collection, conscious use of energy and water, uh, use of uh, renewable, renewable energy, uh, sustainable mobility, use of uh, organic food, or uh, um, food uh, by uh, locally or sourced locally, um, but also some social elements, uh, such as uh, the enhancement of uh, uh, the, the territory and uh, um, the um, capacity of all uh, structure to um, gain a uh, good level of uh, accessibility for people uh, with some uh, physical or mental uh, disability. In 1999, uh, we created a travel guide that is called uh, Guida Blu or the Blue Guide. And it was created uh, by Lega Ambiente and the Italian Twin Club. And this guide contains a ranking of uh, sea tourist destination. Um, the Italian Touring Club uh, are in charge of the touristic part and uh, Lega Ambiente are in charge to made this ranking that starts from one star to five star. Uh, and uh, this guide is aimed at enhancing historical and natural resources of each destination and also the commitment of the administration, the municipality on the protection of the environment and on sustainable development on this uh, uh, destination. Um, since 2040, uh, it has changed uh, its title to Il Mare Più Bello and the most beautiful uh, sea. And we use this guide also to uh, create a connection with the municipality and to help them uh, uh, to obtain uh, a um, uh, a, a more sustainable uh, uh, management uh, of their destination. Uh, since 2010, Lega Ambiente also provides consulting for tourist destination on the, on the theme of sustainable tourism. And we provide also training courses for entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs administrations, park authorities, on the creation of sustainable tourism products and also on sustainable hotel management. This is the logo of our, our courses. Uh, there is uh, just a high school of environmental tourism. Okay, sorry. Okay. In 2020, in collaboration with UniISO, we implemented a national practice to identify sustainable and accessible bathing facilities. Here you can find uh, uh, the, the logo of, uh, uh, of our uh, uh, practice. Uh, we work uh, together with a lot of uh, association uh, of bathing facilities uh, and also with another association uh, that work in the field uh, of accessible tourism. Uh, we hope uh, uh, this practice uh, it's uh, usable for five years uh, and then uh, we hope uh, uh, to be able to transform it into an international standard in the future. Um, like uh, ISO 13 and 1 uh, that is specific for basing facilities. Okay. Um, now we I just find two good practices uh, to, to show you today. Um, one is an accommodation facilities, an hotel in Chioggia. Chioggia is a, a, a small uh, coastal town near Venice. It's called uh, the Little Venice. Uh, and um, we work with uh, uh, this uh, hotel uh, just to uh, reach uh, each one uh, of uh, the point you can see uh, on, on this presentation. And uh, we do training courses with um, uh, their employees uh, and uh, we work uh, together to find the, the best solution uh, for, for this uh, hotel. 
um, at the end uh, <laughs> of this long path, uh, we obtain uh, this uh, uh, smart hotel. Um, we work uh, with them also uh, in uh, communication because I think that you can do all your best, but if you can be able to tell to your guests uh, uh, all your work uh, is uh, um, it's not useful, okay? Because they can't, uh, your guests can help you to, to reach uh, um, your objective. And they can not involve the, in your mission. Uh, okay, so you can find here all the, the, the this hotel has reached. They use uh, um, electricity and warm water produced only from renewable energy sources. All the windows are soundproof and the thermal. They use only LED lighting. Um, they have an uh, home automation system to manage the lights in the room and in the corridors to reduce uh, the waste of energy. They had a recharge point for electric cars uh, and adoption of a smart linen change, uh, installation of a faucet warmer to reduce the water consumption. They use only eco-certified cleaning produce, pro products. Uh, they uh, encourage uh, their guests to use bicycle and it's fully accessible for people with a disability. The restaurant they use uh, local sourced uh, products and also organic food. In the bathroom, there are uh, rechargeable dispenser. They do obviously separate waste collection and uh, they are created a lot of uh, tools uh, just to, to know um, not only Chioggia and Venezia, but also uh, other parts of the Veneto region. And they provide uh, uh, their guests with a, with a, a bags uh, for the, the lunch uh, with the typical uh, products, um, food products of, of the area. Um, and they also have uh, a, a guide that goes with, uh, with guests on the tours uh, and uh, just to uh, move people from Venice. <laughs> it's uh, something that Jose Maria said before me. Uh, Venice uh, is one of the most crowded city. <laughs> A lot of tourists go there and uh, they see only two or three uh, elements of the city and uh, it's a uh, a bigger issue for, for us just uh, uh, to, to, to try to move people from Venice uh, and make them uh, know a lot uh, of the Veneto region that is beautiful and many people doesn't know anything <laughs> about this region. Uh, so this hotel works a lot uh, on this specific uh, issue. And uh, this is a good uh, practice uh, of a destination. Uh, this is Castiglione della Pescaia, that is in uh, Tuscany, in the south part uh, of the region. Um, it's a, a, a coastal uh, town, a small coastal town, rich in, in history and uh, also in uh, uh, natural uh, reserves. Uh, and they work a lot because uh, uh, at this moment they have uh, five stars uh, in the uh, blue guide, but at the beginning uh, they have only three stars. So they asked uh, the, 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 the help of Legambiente uh, just to reach uh, the five stars. And so we work with them uh, just to um, implement one uh, action for here. Uh, and uh, finally they, they've reached the, the five stars. So they have a lot of uh, projects dedicated to the conservation of the dune habitat and the coastal pine forest. Uh, they participate in a um, um, European project and Mitomed Plus uh, with the next tour. And they cre create a green beach model for public beach uh, management. Uh, they create also a project called the Castiglione System that is an initiative based on the collaboration between public and private entities for the creation of a network of tourist facilities that follows the parameters of environmental sustainability. Most of their accommodation as uh, our uh, eco-label. They uh, multiplicate the cycle path over the year 
So now you can take uh, your bike and go all over uh, Castiglione and uh, the nearby. Um, they have a lot of roads, of roads with the maximum speed of 30 kilometers per hour. Uh, they have uh, also a project called Leave the Car Take the Bike um, and the announcement of public transport services. Um, this is a, a very, very, very uh, small uh, coastal town. They have a narrow road with a uh, few uh, parking area. So they have uh, created a, a big park area uh, outside of uh, Castiglione. And you can take a public uh, share, um, a public uh, bike sharing uh, to go to the beach and to go to visit Castiglione. But uh, you also have uh, a, a bus that can take you, electric bus that can take you from this parking area to the, the center of the city and also to the, the beaches. And it's for free. Uh, and uh, this is uh, at the beginning uh, they had a lot of complaining from uh, residents uh, and from uh, tourists for this project uh, because uh, people in Italy are used to take the car and to park uh, exactly in front of the place where I had to go so a lot of people complain about this decision but in this moment uh, it's one of the the, the, the project uh, uh, that that really works uh, in this destination. A lot of tourists now take the bus uh, on the bike uh, to go all over the, the city. They have a, a separate waste collection, a door-to-door -door separate waste collection, uh, a strong commitment to renewable energy. All the public uh, buildings have uh, a, a renewable energy sources. And uh, they uh, have built a lot of initiative to explore both the archaeological area of Vetulonia and the area of the Acciabotrona Nature Reserves, also for people with uh, disabilities. So um, I think that they are good practices, uh, easy, um, replicable in other uh, contexts. Uh, if you have any questions uh, after my presentation or after this meeting, just uh, ask and uh, I'll try to explain <laughs> as better that I can. Okay, these are our contact uh, and also my email. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, again, the the, 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 good, the good practices that you present are um, enlightening us. It's, it's very uh, interesting to, to see. Um, I propose that we uh, hear uh, Philippe and then we, we will uh, take some questions. It, I think it will be better. Um, uh, so Philippe, uh, Moriti is the general manager of the Charente Maritime Youth Hostel, uh, which is a regional network involved in the French and in the international network of youth hosteling. Uh, these hostels uh, are in La Rochelle, Saint, and Rochefort in the in the uh, west coast of uh, France. He is uh, vice president of the regional branch of UNAT, the national union of tourist association and he is also a member of the regional economic social and environmental council he studied uh, administrative and accounting management animation and tourism and he kept linked with training and formation as he is member of juries at uh, business school and also at the university of la rochelle but also is especially attentive in training policies at work he also uh, promote the integration of people who are far from employment and at work, and especially uh, people with disabilities. But now we will hear you on the uh, on the subject of the uh, environmental actions. Philip, it's to you now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um... For information, I don't speak very well English, 
I am sorry. <laughs> That's because But, you are French. <laughs> my presentation will be shorter than my colleagues, I think. It's good for the question. <laughs> How association, as you said, which means uh, Auberge Jeunesse Disset, the number of our department exists for than 40 years. It includes uh, four use hostel in La Rochelle, two. Uh, les minimes and uh, Petit Brouage, and one in Rochefort, and the last one is Saint. It is uh, four hostels, we have uh, 480 play, 80 beds. Our hostels are certified with uh, four labels, includes the uh, European uh, Eco Label, which we will talk about later, but also the label Tourism and Disability, Bicycle Welcoming, and Refuge LPO. The value of uh, our association are the eco-responsibility, the social mix. We welcome people of all ages, all origin, disabled or not, the benevolence and the sustainable tourism. What are our objectives? As a youth hostel of working on sustainable tourism. First, we act for the well-being of the planet, the animal and the people. Then we ensure good condition of living and discovering for the future generation. We want all children to have the chance to enjoy nature and the know is today. We want to make people discover places while preserving that them, excuse me. <laughs> by putting in place small gestures to respect them. With a sustainable tourism, we favor the local actor and place. But above, we can make tourism aware. They are uh, aware, excuse me. Even the smallest one. You understand? Yes. Ah, okay, thank you very much. Excuse me, uh, but uh, no problem. For me, it's, uh, uh, it's more to speak with uh, with a drink, a uh, beer. It's <laughs> too better for me. <laughs> I, I will say you 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 can take a drink of beer and then <laughs> continue. <laughs> We understand you. No problem. <clears throat> Thank you. To speak concretely, what kind of action are we implementing? First. We can talk about the European Ecolabel that we obtained in 2011. For us, it's uh, the most con consistent label with the value we want to transmit. In fact, it shows the awareness of professional and customer to wear eco-responsible products and service. And it's, it is a renewed every two years. It's very important to renew, which uh, guarantee of quality and of an evolution in the action that we implement. Um, okay. Concretely at the use of STEM, the actions that we do are, for example, the installation of a faucet former to reduce the water consumption, or the system to reduce the uh, heating according to the outside temperature, the products of the hot water by solar water heat heater. We also have uh, many products of the bar and the restaurant that are producing in local distribution channel and the paint uh, that we have in the green space do not need watering. We can say, that uh, our hotel have uh, pretty than the same practice than the Hotel Mediterraneo Giorgia. Huh? It's uh, the good name, uh, Paola, <laughs> that Paola uh, talking about. But are uh, some limits. For us, the main one is uh, how to manage the picnic waste. For example, or to reduce uh, sandwiches wrapper, the plastic, the plastic water bottle, 
we are aware that we cannot be perfect, but uh, to make progress, you have we have to make, of course, uh, of reducing energy consumption. We're working on the waste sorting, we have to train to uh, education all the staff in the recycling and the other action. Another problem the, that, that we have in no holding organic waste. And for example, as a solution, we have a recycling for the companies that progress in this organic waste into compost for organic farming basis. We know that we are no perfect, but we also we always try to evolve because every small action can make green change. And uh, for finish, all of the things that have been talking about the uh, most thing to put in place facility amenities. But it is so important to educate people to raise, to open their eyes to sustainable development. This is why we have a development and Erasmus project of sustainable tourism. The association has obtained the Erasmus Plus accreditation for seven years. And the first program took place in uh, April and uh, the presence of uh, 25 young people from all over Europe. The goal was, was to make young people aware of this European citizenship and uh, of sustainable development. But created in the 10 days a to-do list on who to be a sustainable tourist. To achieve this, they had the workshop, visit, and time of uh, reflection with presence uh, or team, polit politicians, and the local NGO. For example, you, you can see that they collect uh, waste, they did a bicycle trip, went to discover the cost and how to pro protect it. And the end of the week, they are present the to-do list in the city hall of uh, La Rochelle. Finally, it's uh, the free framework, framework of uh, your uh, Erasmus accreditation. We invite you to come at uh, meet us in La Rochelle during uh, an event planet for the for the end of the years for this years for the end of the years we invite professionals to come and discuss uh, about sustainable tourism for the young people don't know it is uh, contact with me in french please <laughs> it's a better for me <laughs> but in english it's possible because i have a colleague uh, estelle leblois we we speak very nice english it's not a problem <laughs> And um, this program is for the for the, the the professional we worked with for the young people, and uh, I think it's it's a better for Isto uh, Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Philip. Uh, thank you for the effort of speaking this real language language that is English. <laughs> um, thank you for. Uh, Every every speaker uh, for for the three speaker. <clears throat> uh, I am uh, I am surprised um, that each of your presentation um, makes a link between the action in uh, favor of the environment, but also the the action in favor of disabled people, because uh, every three uh, speaker. Uh, have, uh, have talked about this uh, this question. It's, it's that there is nothing to to see with the question of uh, environment, but um, it 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 surprised me and it makes me think that uh, uh, there is uh, in French uh, a convergence. I don't know what's the, the speaking in in English, but when you are 
um, uh, preoccupied by one uh, question, you are also preoccupied by others. <clears throat> we'll take some, some questions now. Um, uh, we we received uh, in the chat a question of uh, of uh, Nadine who who was asking to to Paula uh, if the 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 label you talk about is quite the same that the eco label green tea and uh, Philippe uh, speaking of uh, the the euro um, uh, le label. Um, um, the the, 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 the the name of the label Philippe? Eco label européen. Eco label. Eco -label. Yeah. Okay, and so there is there is um, a larger question, which is uh, how can we manage all the all the the, the uh, all the labels because in every country there are different labels. I think that's a, that's a, a first question we can talk about. Um, I get is also um, asking something in in the in the chat. Um, I will not. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> it's the idea to uh, respect the commitments uh, in the long term. In fact. Uh, okay. I'll try to, to, to yeah. answer to both of the other questions. Okay, there are a lot of labels uh, all over the Europe and all over the world, but the, there are also the GSTC, the Global Sustainable Tourism Council, that provides uh, a, um, a standard, a, a, uh, just certified if a label uh, it's reliable or not. Okay, so uh, if your label is certified by GSTC, uh, that means that it's reliable. Uh, as for example, <laughs> Green Key is certified. We are under certification, so we, we hope to obtain this certification. And um, I think that it's uh, also the European Eco Label as the GSTC certification. So I think that if a label has this certification, you can be sure uh -huh. that it's uh, a good project. <laughs> and uh, for the, the um, the question of uh, uh, sorry, okay. Um, the um, when you start the process uh, of certification, um, sometimes I say that you can stop when you just uh, uh, see how your guests are satisfied, how they are happy and uh, uh, I can also mm, just uh, be a part of the transformation. Mm, just, I think it's uh, very difficult that you just say, okay, I have the certification, I, I don't do more. <laughs> so mm, every two years, for example, we go and uh, we do a on-site uh, uh, visit uh, to our uh, certified accommodation just to verify that they maintain uh, their standard. And uh, we ask also them uh, over here to tell us uh, every improvement uh, they have made uh, in, the, in this year. And we encourage them to do more and they are very mm, happy to to do this uh, this process and to uh, to do some something for the environment. So I don't think uh, they are just uh, um, mm, I, I think that they can just maintain it in, in the long term. I hope uh, I have answered. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, I, I will. Um, so, Charles, have a question. I have uh, a question in link with the label, and uh, I would like to to ask it to Nora <laughs> if she agrees from the Bundesforum in the, in Germany. Um, is the is for the, the the question is the question of the label the the also important in in uh, in Germany and uh, is there um, a reference label uh, for uh, for tourism and for uh, hosteling in, in Germany and I will switch to Charles after but I would like to know if the the, the situation is the same than the other countries if you can answer. <laughs> if you if you cannot, it's there is no problem. <laughs> no, um, actually, I I think I, I yeah I can answer your question, but um, we also have um, so many uh, quality labels here in Germany, also also in um, uh, youth travel and uh, sustainability is a um, very big topic now, um, also for accommodation for youth accommodation, also for us um, in uh, the whole travel area. So um, I know that um, there are labels and it's the, the same procedure like Paola um, explained that after two years, they, um, they, they recheck again and they see how it proceeds. But um, I cannot give you now an example for, for any label. So, so, so there is, there, like in other countries, there are a lot of labels, which yeah. is but um, for, for the, the tourists and people, it's not clear uh, when you come from one country to another, you have different levels and it's a, a problem we have uh, already noted in, uh, in a presentation in, for, for uh, people in France, but it's, I think it's the same in different countries. But um, maybe we will switch on the question of Charles. Uh, attends, just... Je peux faire ouais. une intervention. Je te la fais en français, tu pourras la traduire, ça sera peut-être plus simple. <rire> Thank you. Euh, en fait, en France, il y a deux gros labels sur euh, tout ce qui est programme autour de, de l'environnement. C'est l'écolabel européen qui est porté par l'agence française des normes au niveau, ça, ça s'appelle l'AFNOR, qui est, qui est quand même, et qui permet de pouvoir obtenir des financements aussi euh, des régions, euh, et notamment ici en Nouvelle-Aquitaine. Et après, tu as Clé Verte, qui est un label... Euh, qui tourne autour du développement durable et qui est plus léger quand même que, que, que l'écolabel. Et euh, il y a des indicateurs et des, et des contrôles qui se font d'une manière régulière. Et ça coûte un peu cher. Voilà ce que je voulais dire juste. So, um, I will let Charles introduce. He, he has a better English than me. Oh. And then you can uh, ask a question. It's better. Yeah, OK. Uh, thank you, Benoît. Uh, basically, what uh, Philippe uh, replied is that in France, they are, there are two uh, main uh, labels. The one is the eco label recognized by AFNA, which is a, a kind of agency, uh, regulation agency. Uh, and the, the other one is a Green Key, uh, which is uh, the, the second most uh, important. Is he mentioned at the end uh, that uh, yeah there is of course a, a cost uh, that that's uh, that's also another issue for small structure you know to um, to implement the eco label and to uh, the cost that goes with this you know this is uh, basically what uh, Philip said. Now, <clears throat> uh, if you allow me. Um, I, I wanted to uh, come back to the, uh, I have two questions. <clears throat> One more, uh, maybe more uh, to Jose Maria, or at least coming back to his presentation, when we see the trends and contradictions that uh, Jose Maria showed us, <clears throat> Um, I, I have in mind an expression that came out uh, in the last few months following the pandemic crisis, which is the so-called revenge tourism. You all have seen or heard about that revenge tourism, uh, meaning that uh, after two years of uh, uh, difficulties uh, for traveling, 
people will double their their uh, trips and travels and uh, uh, will try re really to uh, to gain what they 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 might have lost <clears throat> so my question here for jose uh, is do you really think uh, that um, things are coming back as it was before or even worse and it's a short a, a, a short term uh, trend or do you think that uh, you know it's more a, a revenge tourism that will last for uh, uh, some months and that after that people because of of also the the reality of thinking about the climate change and so on uh will will try to to change the way they do and that destination will also try to change their, their model or it's just that people did not understand or that we did not learn or the tourism sector globally did not learn any lessons from that crisis. That's my first question. Okay, so you, you want me to answer? Yeah, <laughs> and then we have the other question. No, the, the idea yeah. is I, I am quite uh, realistic about that. Realistic does not mean pessimistic. Otherwise, I could not work in this uh, within this field because I I see all these contradictions. For example, in my country, and I think they are uh, as far as uh, uh, yeah. I I, tra I travel at, uh, and I I don't see the sustainability nowhere. So I think there is a question of. Uh, uh, I, I don't know whose fault it is, maybe from the destinations, maybe from the academy or the NGOs or the consultants or all together. But at the end, uh, I go to many of these, like I go to Mallorca, just an example. And then we have the Sustainable Destination Summit and then all the companies uh, prom promoting uh, an enormous quantity of labels and declarations and charters. So it's, uh, it's a bit... Uh, is really confusing. This is one thing I wanted to add in relation to the previous question. I think uh, labels are losing part of their their power. At least is what we feel here in Spain. I work. I represent, uh, as mentioned, travel and, and green destinations and uh, go travel program, but also travel life for tour operators for many years. And the the tourists when we make uh, surveys and studies. The tourists already they do not believe anymore in just the, the labels. They want more. So a, they get the, the the responsible ones. So the motivated ones. They they ask uh, when they go to the companies uh, more than the label. They want to participate. They want to be involved. They they are showing uh, some complicity in the low carbon travel. They are ready to to take a bicycle instead of taking a taxi for a couple of kilometers, but this is a very sm extremely small number of tourists and an extremely small number of tour operators. I work with the big ones. I work with big hotel chains and the biggest tour operators. And uh, uh, when you look at the tourists and you look every weekend, for example, now the, the gasoline is uh, more than two euros. Uh, uh, so it makes really expensive to travel Every weekend, millions of cars flee out the big cities, going to the national parks, going to the rural areas around, and they are provoking a real disaster because these areas, they are not ready for that. So they are ready for the number of tourists before the pandemics, but they are not ready for this invasion of tourists that are, the, you, you mentioned the revenge ones, they are really fed up with the lockdown, they are really fed up with the mask and with everything. And so they take the car desperately, go to the natural areas, which are not at all prepared for such an impact. And this is why we are suffering uh, environmental impacts, social impacts. Uh, the population is, a, which is not living on tourism, is a bit fed up too. So I think we really are not applicating the model. And when I look at the catalogs of the big tour operators, they are promoting exactly the same as before. So they are promoting Dominicana who has been the, best, the Dominican Republic, who has been the first destination in recover, and they are promoting the same model of 900 euros with the plane and the, and the all-inclusive one week, which is really uh, 
uh, which is really cheap. With this money in Spain, you only can spend a couple, you can spend three days in a rural accommodation. And with uh, a bit more than that, you go to Dominican Republic. So I don't, I don't feel we are really uh, uh, working on uh, structural changes on sustainability. So we are uh, more, uh, it's a, I think the intention is good. I'm sure that the intention is good, but no, we are not reaching the mind of the tourists and the tourists now, they just take their car. Maybe the only advance is that they are a bit more of electrical cars or a bit more of hybrid cars, but just a bit, because when you get out of the city, it's almost impossible to recharge the car. So this is only worth if you are moving really in the big cities, in the rural areas, forget completely about uh, electric electric possibilities. And so I think this is why, is, is, this is the contradiction I feel is, we send a message, but then we don't facilitate the tourists to follow uh, this kind of recommendations. And then at the end, the tourists are doing exactly the same. And this case in Mallorca, and I finish with it, is the same. So they are, support, they are trying, they are pro, pro, pretending to lead a sustainable um, transformation, but then now they are facing this problem that there is no more space there are so many rental cars that the, the, the traffic jam is continuous and the, the people cannot live in the island the, because they have no, no space for, for the staff or the doctors cannot go there. I heard stories very funny about the doctors uh, sleeping in, the, in their own van because they, they don't find a place to, to work, to live in the island. So this is why it is uh, it's totally contradictory. And uh, then I, I think we are in a in a critical moment, if we don't take the proper decisions, I feel that we will find in some years is probably worse than worse than before, because also the people has less money because of the cost of living. So the price comes back to be the main element of decision making. No? This is what I see all around, but Spain is a very particular place. We are really overcrowded with tourism. Okay. Thank, thanks, Jose. And my second question, and it's for all the, the speakers, so if Paola or Philip want to give some elements, it's precisely regarding the social component of sustainability. I, I fully understand that today, uh, because of the climate change issue, uh, the environmental uh, dimension is a priority. We, we all understand this. But uh, we know that uh, in the so, uh, sustainability, there are three pillars. And um, do you believe that the social, uh, social component uh, of sustainability in tourism is taken uh, into account enough um, uh, and, uh, in terms of uh, impact indicators uh, regarding the workers, the residents, the the travelers, I know some of you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, how to facilitate travel for people with disabilities. You have talked about training for workers, but uh, I would like to have just a short uh, feedback from you regarding this, because it will be, uh, and I will talk at the end, uh, the, 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 the major, um, issue of our next uh, World Congress. Uh, and this is, I think, where ISTO can, can bring something based on your experiences. But yeah, the social component is, is a question I have. So I don't know if Paula or Philip would like to say something on this. Huh. Paola? OK. Um, I think that a lot of destination in Italy are working on the, the, the social part of responsible tourism, especially after this uh, pandemic, because uh, we, we have had the, the, the same problem uh, uh, described by Jose Maria. A lot of our internal uh, areas and uh, mountain regions, uh, especially where the, there are parks uh, or natural reserves, 
um, were crowded by people uh, looking for space, <laughs> a place where they don't have to wear a mask, uh, or a place where they can be more in contact with nature. But all these destinations, especially in 2020, are not uh, prepared uh, for this, uh, for so many people arriving there. And most of them are, uh, have worked uh, in these two years uh, just to be prepared and just to uh, take some measures to control uh, the, the incoming of people and just to spread people uh, in all the destination and not only in one places. And I think that with all of our problems, but we, we are working just to offer a lot of uh, uh, different solution uh, to make tourism uh, in, in a destination. So I think that in Italy, we are working hard on this point. I don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> in the rest of yes. Europe, but mm -hmm. we are trying to, to do our best in this moment. Mm -hmm. Je, je propose de le faire en français. Charles, tu oui, peux oui. la traduire, s'il te plaît Oui. Euh, donc, en France, en fait, euh, il y a deux approches par rapport à la dimension sociale. Il y a euh, favoriser l'accès à tous euh, aux vacances, qui est une volonté euh, politique. Et après, euh, il y a aussi tout ce qui s'est mis en place, et notamment, on l'a bien vu lors de, de la, du Covid, c'est-à-dire euh, comment le tourisme local a a pu être aussi un lieu qui a répondu à des demandes et on voit très bien sur certains niveaux de réservation et notamment sur des, comment dire, des lieux comme la Dordogne ou comme la Corrèze qui, ont, qui sont des départements où il n'y a pas forcément une grosse fréquentation touristique. Alors la Dordogne un peu plus que la Corrèze, mais où ils ont tiré aussi un peu leur épingle du jeu en, en proposant des, comment dire, des vacances qui étaient plutôt des vacances... Euh, en lien avec la nature et avec des retours aux sources que réellement euh, des vacances euh, où, où on devait euh, payer euh, dès qu'on qu pouvait bouger. Donc, euh, juste sur le tourisme social, il euh, y a comment favoriser le départ en vacances. Et là, je pense qu'il faut se rattacher à des actions spécifiques qui sont mises en place, soit par l'Agence nationale d'échecs de vacances, hein, c'est déjà des choses qu'on a déjà évoquées avec ISTO, Soit des programmes spécifiques à destination des étudiants. Alors, il y a les projets Erasmus, mais il y a aussi des projets spécifiques. Je pense à, à l'UNAT Nouvelle Aquitaine qui a mis en place un projet avec les étudiants qui s'appelle Bolder, où chaque structure adhérente à l'UNAT ont proposé des, des programmes avec des prix maîtrisés sur des périodes avant les grandes vacances scolaires, mais pendant les périodes aussi où les étudiants pouvaient voyager. Et puis, je pense à des, à des actions qui sont mises en place avec un opérateur comme Vacances Ouvertes, qui est aussi membre de Histo, qui, qui œuvre pour le départ en vacances des seniors, des, des familles et des personnes qui ont moins d'opportunités dans la vie. Voilà. Si je pouvais faire court, parce qu'après, on peut bien sûr oui, oui. continuer. Mais... OK. Thank you, Philippe. So, Philippe, basically, saying that there are two approaches in France. One is uh, what we call tourism for all. Uh, there are uh, social policies, uh, meaning public policies uh, at the national and also regional level. He, at national level, you all know the famous holiday voucher scheme uh, uh, INC, managed by the INCV, which is uh, celebrating uh, this year its uh, uh, 40 10th anniversary, if, if I'm not wrong, yeah. Um, uh, and also other uh, mechanism uh, to facilitate travel and tourism for young people, for low-income families and seniors. Um, that's one thing. And what the new aspect is that uh, some destinations, he, 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 talk, he mentioned Dordogne, which is a uh, uh, not the region, but uh, you can put it in this area, some departments that have developed and proposed new 
concept of holidays in line in link uh, or in line with uh, nature. Uh, so uh, this proximity tourism, local tourism, has emerged in some places that were not used to receive so so many tourists, and that want to propose uh, something different and uh, certainly more uh, affordable. So basically, that's uh, what Philippe mentioned. Et le, pour finir, attends, juste pour terminer, c'est le tourisme domestique, quand même, je pense, qui peut-être demain sera un des enjeux pour les développements de structures. Parce qu'il va y avoir quand même un mouvement qui s'opère. Euh, Rossé ouais. l'a évoqué sur, euh, comment dire, une, un tourisme de masse qui, de toute façon, lui, va devoir économiquement vivre. Donc, ils vont faire, ils vont casser des prix. Mais moi, ce que je ouais. crois beaucoup, c'est que le tourisme domestique va, 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 va arriver. On a bien vu là, avec les projets qu'on a mis en place sur Erasmus, la position des jeunes vis-à-vis -vis de cette réflexion du tourisme domestique et puis le contact. Et puis, je crois aussi, et ça, c'est la France qui a énormément œuvré, mais l'Europe aussi, sur tout ce qui est les euroroutes, c'est-à-dire tout ce qui est le tourisme à vélo. Et on voit que ça prend une dimension très, très importante et que là, il faut que les collectivités locales, je pense notamment aux régions et pourquoi pas aux départements, mais aussi en lien avec les transporteurs comme la SNCF, par exemple, ou la SNCB, je crois, en Belgique, qu'ils aménagent des trains pour pouvoir accueillir aussi ces touristes à vélo parce qu'on on commence à en voir la limite euh, dès maintenant où euh, il n'y a que deux ou trois places pour des vélos alors qu'on on favorise énormément le tourisme vélo en France. So just to briefly translate this, uh, Philippe is uh, saying that domestic tourism, proximity tourism uh, will certainly be a, a key challenge for the future in, in many countries. Uh, we already see the development and uh, uh, of new products. He, he mentioned the Euro route, you know. Um, uh, we, we all see you also in your own countries, uh, more people traveling and biking, but we also have to provide facilities and, and, and service, services for for these travelers, um, for instance, uh, you just mentioned that uh, uh, you need uh, to provide more space in train for travelers uh, that bring their, their their home bike. So that's that that was uh, the reply of Philippe. Uh, Benoît, je te laisse la parole. But I think there is another question. Marie Noël, Marie Noël, and and question, and reaction. Uh, Marie Noël uh, have a question of uh, reaction. So uh, you can you can speak, Marie Noël, with your microphone. Uh, yes, just to go in the uh, direction uh, Philip uh, speak. We are just starting a cycling uh, mission uh, with uh, students to in two weeks. They go in the lore valley to identify the strength and weakness we want to make uh, to, to, um, the strength and weakness to uh, go inside on this area you know because like uh, philippe said it's uh, hard to go in train to find place to uh, put uh, the thike so we go with uh, 35 students to have a look on this and give the information to the uh, regional council and whatever and say it's important to have more train to develop the uh, connection between train, buses, and whatever. And we have uh, decided to make an assessment for the week of sustainable tourism of ISTO to give you a ten, to to comment with this um, with this experience. It's really important for us to have also the youngest. Uh, try and say, okay, you said that, but you know we cannot do that. And um, also for the uh, the, uh, the question of the uh, uh, the the inclusion, we with colleague we are working right now uh, on natural parks and the issue of inclusion. And uh, we see there is big difference between the perception we are right now in France which is mainly uh, oriented towards uh, disability. And we worked with the uh, Sheffield University in England, um, which uh, there are more interest in access for all. 
uh, and uh, especially for uh, the different communities. So um, there is also this kind of uh, um, things with really important. Um, there is a big, uh, a huge um, uh, difference between uh, what we um, pretend to do and what we do finally. And uh, uh, to finally, for the, the labels, um, it's for me the question of a concrete implementation in the long term and also the act, uh, acceptance by tourists or guests. And it's interesting also to say that UNAT um, has opened a debate or to uh, mobilize the um, teams and staff around uh, the, the, the challenge of a uh, ecological transition. And uh, they ask the question, it's really important, what are the solution for the small structures that cannot always afford these levels? And it's also something really important, I think. And finally, um, for the, um, I am working um, on the uh, way of a uh, future prof tourism professional we look at um, uh, the, this issue. It's also important for me to uh, form uh, the, the future professional of the sector and the way of considering the country they visit differently. And not, for, for example, I worked in, uh, with Greenland and I will see the, um, how they will really working with the community, uh, especially to provide them resources because a lot of people say, yeah, we go there, we work with the community, but when we go in the country, we see there is very, very small uh, positive impact for their community. I, I don't know if I am <laughs> enough. That's it. Thank you, Marie-Noël. Um, unfortunately, we are coming to the end of this uh, Café Isto. Uh, I will let uh, Charles conclude in a few minutes and uh, also um, uh, remind us the, the next uh, appointments on the agenda. Um, I uh, would like, um, I would like, I, I, I would have liked to, to talk more uh, on the, uh, the, the third part the, of the of the ecological action because we we have a, a lot talk about the professional and the client but uh, I think that the public power uh, will need to uh, to take some some measures and um, I am a, a little bit frustrated to to that we, we 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 can't exchange more on this subject because could be very interesting to know uh, what are the, the position of the countries. But maybe uh, we will talk about that when everybody will meet uh, the, the meeting of uh, Philippe in La Rochelle at the end of the year. <laughs> um, so we, we should continue, but that's the end of the timing. Um, I will let Charles conclude. So thank you uh, for everybody to participate to this uh, Café Isto and, and thank you uh, to Jose, Paola and Philippe for their presentation. Uh, Charles? Yes, yes. Okay, just before we completely end uh, this uh, session, I would like to make some announcement regarding the upcoming activities. The first one is ISTO International Week. It will be our third edition, uh, taking place from June 20 to June 26. On June 20, we will have our General Assembly. It's online. Uh, we will present the annual activity report. Uh, that's uh, important. So you will receive all the information, but also during this week, for this week, you already receive um, some uh, information asking you to provide us information about any activities, project, uh, publications, any, any kind of initiatives you have. You complete a very short form and we will publish it on ISTO website dedicated to the international 
week. So it's a way, that's the main purpose of this International Week is to promote and give visibility to ISTO members initiatives. So please uh, uh, come back with, to, to us with this. And during that, that same week, there will be also three workshops and webinars in order to prepare uh, our next World Congress, I will say a word about that, and also some ISTO Connect session, which are mainly networking sessions. We call it ISTO Connect. So that will be another type of opportunity to uh, present your, uh, your company, your organization, and say, if you are looking for partners, for, for, uh, for a project, for businesses, for uh, good exchange of good practices. So all this uh, will be communicated to you and you already have received information regarding the uh, activities we can, you have and that we can promote. The second uh, important point is the ISTO awards. That's part of the ISTO action plan. And we, it, we will launch it next week. So next week, you will, all ISTO members will receive the information about ISTO awards. Uh, it's the first time, I mean, for many years, we have ISTO awards uh, with different uh, categories for public authorities, uh, uh, fair, responsible, or, or uh, social uh, tourism stakeholders, also for researchers. So please uh, take care, have a look at this, and we invite you, if you have something interesting to, to present, to, um, to, to, can, to, to apply for these ISTO awards, that will be um, presented at the next uh, World uh, Con ISTO Congress. And that's my final point. The, <clears throat> you already saw normally uh, first save the date. More detailed information will come in the, uh, in the next few days. But just keep in mind that this uh, uh, ISTO Congress, that's the, 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 the first one, we will have since uh, Lyon in 2018, will take place in uh, Azores Islands, uh, thanks to the support of the Azores Regional Government, Turismo de Portugal, and also the Inatel Foundation that you all know. Uh, from October 12 to October 15, uh, I think it's gonna be something unique uh, Azores is very well known about its nature, about uh, all they did regarding sustainability and, and environmental sustainability. Um, but precisely, they have an interest to host this Congress because they would like also to develop the social component of sustainability uh, that would be at the heart of this uh, Congress. So, more information to come, but please block your agenda. And, uh, and finally, I would like to thank uh, Benoit uh, Caleo and also my colleagues here at the Secretariat, Sabrina and Lea, who have been working for the preparation of this uh, Café Sisto Europe. So thanks, uh, thanks a lot uh, for your participation uh, and, uh, and see you very soon. Have a nice day. Thank you. Merci. Merci, Philippe. Bonjour à tous. Thank you very much. Merci. Bye. Bonne journée. Bye-bye.